Now in this module, let's talk about SQL Server agent jobs. I should warn you that this module, like all of my modules, is opinionated. You don't pay me to read you books online. So there are times, like this module, where I'm going to say things that kind of disagree with what Books Online says. And I'm going to tell you my advice. This is the whole thing with the Fundamentals of Database Administration class. It's about a senior DBA taking you aside and telling you about all the ways that they have been burned. SQL Server started a really long time ago, and way back then, even before it had any kind of integration or awareness with Windows, even way back, uh, back before it was even tied to Windows at all, and you could run it on, say, OS2, SQL Server had to deal with a lot of building its own infrastructure. It had to deal with doing its own backups, its own sending of email, its own alert logging, all kinds of things. And some of the things that Microsoft built into the product are better than what you get inside the operating system. And that's freaking awesome. The people who built this were visionaries. They were thinking a really long way ahead. And they built in things that still work wonderfully even today. Some of them don't. Some of them aren't as good, but we're just so conditioned to using them. And those of us who are database administrators have been relying on them for a really long time, even when we probably shouldn't. For example, SQL Server Agent. Now, if you're a Linux user, you know Cron. If you're a Windows user, you know Task Scheduler. It gives you the ability to run tasks on a scheduled basis. And you probably don't go into Windows Task Scheduler that often. If you're a Linux admin, you probably go into Cron or schedule your jobs however you want to. But SQL Server needed this long before it had anything luxurious like Windows Task Scheduler. And so SQL Server Agent is their equivalent, and it has things like jobs and alerts and notifications. Because this has been out for so long, and because it's so easy to find documentation about how to do it, and because so many people who work with data need to do things on a regular basis to their data, agent jobs are really popular. I would even argue that agent jobs are probably much more popular than Windows Task Scheduler. I know more people who know agent jobs than they do Windows Task Scheduler. And sometimes I even have to remind them to go, hey, do you know there's something that Windows has built in that does this not just for SQL Server, but from any server, and you can fire and make things happen? But if you've been using SQL Server for quite a while, remember the target for this course is people who are just getting started on their database administrator fundamentals. If you've been using databases kind of for a while, but you've been gradually segueing into it from development or from systems administration, you may have already built all kinds of jobs to do things like build reporting tables, send emails to customers, build business logic rules on timed basis. But just because you're used to doing it doesn't mean it's a good idea. And in fact, it's a really bad idea because the security around agent jobs is a patchwork mess. It's really frustrating to try to control and lock down people's permissions when very often in a shop that only has a couple of SQL servers and they're used to letting everyone be sysadmin, in a shop like that, the developers and systems administrators and everyone are used to just going into SQL Server, scheduling tasks to be done anytime that they want, and they don't know where those tasks live. See, the data for all of those tasks lives in a system database called MSDB. And usually when we're backing up and restoring SQL Server, we rarely restore MSDB. And when we need to fail over from one SQL Server to another, like later in your career when you start building log shipping, always on availability groups, replication, all kinds of stuff, VM snapshots, we don't fail over agent jobs from one place to another. So what we'll do when we need to fail over to disaster recovery or when we need to rebuild a server from scratch is we try to copy all of the agent jobs but when the primary is down, the old SQL server that you used to be running, when that primary server is down and you just fire open a big long list of agent jobs and you put them all in, you don't know which ones have been failing for years. 
Happens to me every time I go look at a SQL Server. I'll go pop open the agent job monitor, and there'll be like 50 agent jobs inside there. And I'm like, okay, five of these have failed continuously for the last six months. Does anybody know what these are doing or why they're failing? And then everybody kind of scratches their heads and is like, uh, we're not really sure. I think this was done by the last admin. I, I'm not sure if we still need this other one or not. And especially because nobody ever names their jobs appropriately, nobody sets up failure alerts to go to the right people. They just build an agent job and then they walk away from it assuming that it works. I have a great story I can tell you from one time when I was a database administrator. So one time when I was a database administrator, I was dealing with resuscitating a server that someone brought me that had come back from the dead. And I go and resuscitate this server, and it had half a dozen agent jobs, most of which hadn't worked in a really long time, but no one knew. And I'm like, all right, so which ones of these should I fix? The manager didn't know better. So he said, well, just go ahead and fix all of them and make them all work. So I fix all of them, and I have to make code changes and data changes in order to make all these jobs successfully work, and they work and like a day or two later, I get this panicked phone call. I get a panicked phone call from an end user who's like, oh my God, our sales data is all kinds of messed up. And I'm like, okay, talk, talk me through what happened. Well, it turned out that one of the agent jobs that I fixed, that I got to work again, started populating data into a table that no one was expecting to have data in it. Turns out that agent job had failed months ago People didn't know why the data wasn't being populated, so they built their own process. Now, because I fixed that agent job, all of a sudden we had twice the sales data that people were used to having. So my moral of the story is, whenever I'm dealing with a SQL Server, whenever I'm taking one over, Whenever I'm taking one over, I want to head off future problems by starting with a consistent naming schema. I want to name every one of my agent jobs with what department owns them. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to disable any jobs that people don't take ownership of. If you can't tell me who owns it or what it does, it's done. I'm not going to play around with it on my SQL server. I'm also kind of a butthole. But I'm going to put in the very first word of any agent job's name is going to be the name of the department who owns it. It's fairly safe to rename agent jobs. Technically, you can trigger agent jobs in code by specifying what their names are. So there, you do run the risk if you rename it that someone's triggering job will fail. That's fairly unusual. Or, very, yeah, fairly unusual. Then what I'm going to do is whoever's department name starts the job, they're going to get alerts whenever that job fails. And I'm done. I'm washing my hands of those jobs. I wash my hands a lot. I'm washing my hands of those jobs because I want to empower whoever owns that job to do the troubleshooting. i got enough crap to do. I'm not going to troubleshoot your agent jobs. Then, long term, whenever people have a SQL Server and they're bringing me stuff and they go, hey, we want to add this as an agent job, these are good fits for agent jobs. Things that a system administrator would do. Scheduling database backups, scheduling index maintenance, scheduling reporting services reports, because that's just the way that standard edition works, is it tends to schedule its agent jobs or schedule its reporting services jobs with agent jobs. Not a big fan of it. It's just the way that Microsoft wants us to do it. Anything else, if it's anything that developers want, that should be in an application. And I want to empower you. It's always tricky as a, as a database administrator, DBA, don't bother asking. It's always tricky as a database administrator. I don't want to say no all the time and smack people for doing things. I don't want it to come off that way because then I get a bad reputation in the company. But I, what I want to say is, when someone comes to me and wants an agent job, I'm going to be like, okay, so tell me more about, oh, you're trying to rebuild a table on a regular basis for the application, right? It's for your application. And then as long as you lead them with yes, they'll tend to nod their head right back. Oh, so this is for your application. And then they'll go, yeah. And I'm like, great, do it in your application. They're like, but, 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 but I, I don't have a scheduler. You can build one. Let's Google together and I'll show you how to trigger things on a time basis with C-sharp. 
or Java or whatever it is that they want to do. You can Google anything and find a bad example of the code. Or if they're absolutely dead set on insisting that something needs to happen on a scheduled basis and it shouldn't be inside their code, that's what Windows Task Scheduler is for. You go build your own application and call it whenever you want with Windows Task Scheduler. That way, when I fail around the SQL Server from one place to another, we don't have to worry about your app code breaking. I always like to, to frame it as, as uh, something that I'm going to do incorrectly. Look, I, I may have to fail over this SQL Server from one place to another, and you know me, I'm not that bright. SQL Server isn't all that powerful, and I can't move agent jobs from one place to another easily and safely, especially when they have things like file paths in them or server connection names, anything like that, linked servers. So you go manage it. I trust you to manage your own application server. That way you can disable this job whenever you want, and you can do a level of logging that you're comfortable with. Now remember, this is the fundamentals of database administration class. What I'm really doing here is prepping you for a much longer journey. As you go through your career, it's important to get used to heading off things like agent jobs on the SQL Server now, because it's only going to get more complex as you start to work across, say, large geographically distributed systems where you're dealing with lots of SQL servers in availability groups failing over from time to time that could have hundreds or thousands of jobs scheduled against them. True story, I've seen SQL servers with several hundred agent jobs all trying to run simultaneously, and you even run into problems where agent can just only run so many tasks at exactly the same time. So long term, Agent's a wonderful fit for things that are built into SQL Server, like scheduling backups, restoring databases, integrity checks. But if it's something for the application's purpose, head off and do it over in an application in, or in Windows Task Scheduler instead of doing it in an agent job.